Hello and welcome to the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today on the video we're going to continue our Bible study in the book of Isaiah. We are on chapter 33 and as we go forward to um, read this chapter, what we're going to take into notice is the fact that uh, what God says in reference to those who come up against his kingdom and woes the judgment and the wrath that he has stored up for those type of people and we're going to go into that too all right so it begins with woe to thee that spoils and and thou was not spoiled and deals treacherously and they deal not treacherously with you when thou shalt cease to spoil thou shalt be spoiled and when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously they shall deal treacherously with you so you know within that first verse it's just saying basically Woe to the one that mistreats another because that same way that you mistreat that one is going to be the same way that you're going to be treated. You know, just as the Lord said in the scriptures in the New Testament also, Jesus Christ said it in Matthew chapter 7. And let me go to that. Matthew chapter 7 uh, verse 12. He says, therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do even uh, so to them. For this is the law and the prophets, okay? This is the law and the prophets. Now, that's in the Old Testament. We see, we just read that in this verse, that God is pretty clear on that and uh, how we treat one another. And then also he has Jesus Christ telling us that in the New Testament, even after the new covenant has been established for us in the earth, okay? So then um, going on to verse 2, back to Isaiah chapter 33, he says, O Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for you. Be thou this their arm every morning. Our salvation as in the tr the time of trouble. Okay. Now again, because they're facing a lot of difficulty and trouble, and this is Israel praying out to, to the Lord uh, after God makes that statement because he sees what they're going through. Okay. He's going to definitely hear their prayer and going to come through for them. And so he says, at the noise of the tumult, the people fled. At the lifting up of thyself, the nations were scattered. And your spoil shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar. As the running to and fro of lo locusts shall he run upon them. For the Lord is exalted. For he dwells on high and he has filled Zion with judgment. Justice. Judgment we know is justice with God and his kingdom and righteousness. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. For the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Now, God treasures individuals that fear him because they're, you know, that's a reverence. That's a response. That's an honor to God. Because, you know, if you reverence him and you fear what he says, don't do this, don't do that. And you do do it. Okay. But then you're apologetic because you didn't, you know, mean to do it like David. David, you know, because we know this different, uh, battles david was in and he went through and uh, then we know the different weaknesses he had when it came to women okay and Bathsheba, okay but he was still one as we know and i'm sure all have heard you know that he was a man out of the word of god that was after the heart of god because he continued to express himself in truth and remorse toward god and reverence because of his will because of God's word and what his statutes and what he said, even though he couldn't keep them at all times, he still reverenced God. And I, and I think that is what is the most important thing and the most important part about our relationship with our God is to reverence, even though you, it's hard to keep his commandments. It may be, you may be struggling with it, but still, you know that he is the one who created them and you reverence him and you must re have remorse for the fact that if you cannot keep them and ask him to help you and he will, help you to keep them okay so uh and they said here going on so that's why he says the fear of the lord is his treasure he treasures that individual that fears what he says okay in his word not what man is saying but what he says because sometimes it can be translated differently so verse 7 says behold their valiant ones shall cry without and the ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly the highways lie waste, the wayfaring man sees, for he has broken the covenant, and he has despised the cities. He regards no man, for the earth mourns and languishes. 
Lebanon is a shame and cut down, and Sharon is like a wilderness. And Bashan and Carmel shake off their fruits, okay, because they are uh, dealing with a lot of trouble and devastation at that point in time. And this is talking about the children of Israel and the trouble that they're experiencing at this that moment in time. And, uh, of, of course, because of the hand of God in Jerusalem, okay, so, I mean, so that we understand where this particular... Uh, where, the, where they're voicing their opinions from, okay? So then verse 10, it says, Now will I rise, the Lord is saying. I'm going to rise up now. Now will I be exalted. Now will I lift up myself. You shall conceive chaff, and he shall bring forth stubble. Your breath as fire shall devour you. And the people shall be as the burnings of lime, as thorns cut up shall they be burned in the fire, okay? So he will rise and go forward with vengeance because he's definitely told us throughout his word of god vengeance is mine i shall repay so hear ye those that are far off what i have done and you that are near acknowledge my might okay acknowledge what god does in his power and his strength is victorious his victories that he brings for the kingdom hallelujah we thank you oh heavenly father yes we will Truly acknowledge your might, your mighty strong hand, O Heavenly Father. Victorious in battle, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God of fire, mighty God of war, hallelujah. We thank you for fighting for us always and forever. Kingdom of glory, Heavenly Father, hallelujah. He says, the sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Who is among us shall dwell with the devouring fire, he says. Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burdens? He that walks righteously and speaks uprightly. He that despises the gain of oppressions and shakes his hands from holding of bribes. That stops his ears from hearing of blood and shuts his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the fortress of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure for thine eyes shall see the king and his beauty and they shall behold the land that is very far off okay i want to stop right there because i just want to go into what we just read from verses 13 through 16 and speaking and where he asked the question who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire of the lord because we know that God is a consuming fire and then he get, he tells us who's going to dwell with him in his presence who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burnings? He that walks righteously and speaks uprightly, okay? He that despises the gain of oppression, okay? And uh, that would be an individual that would not walk like Pharaoh because Pharaoh was uh, a man who was into oppression. He oppressed the children of Israel. In the Old Testament, we know the story of how God came and delivered them out of that oppression. They, they were slaves, okay? So God is not, he's not with that individual that brings forth the presence of oppression down upon people, mainly not upon his people, but not for a people, period, because he is not the one, uh, he's not into burdening and uh, depression and oppression and suppression. He's into life, lifting, and liberty. Hallelujah for it. He says, uh, he that walks, verse 15, he that walks righteously and speaks uprightly, he that despises the gain of oppressions, that shakes his hand from holding of bribes, okay, that person will dwell in the midst of the Heavenly Father with his fiery Holy Spirit, that one that does not take money for bribes or takes anything for bri bribery, it can't be bribed, okay, basically, that stops his ears from hearing of blood, and shuts his eyes from seeing evil. That is the type of person, again, that shall dwell on high with the Heavenly Father. His defense, he says, shall be the fortress of rocks. Hallelujah. All right, going on, he says in verse 17, Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. That sh they shall behold the land that is very far off. Thine heart shall meditate terror. Where, where is the scribe? Where is this receiver? Where is he that counts the towers? Thou shalt not see a fierce people, a people of a deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of a stammering tongue that, that thou cannot understand. 
for look upon Zion because he will make it clear to us. Okay, he will definitely make clear the language of those, if you have the Holy Spirit that are around you, that speak a whole nother language, mighty God, mighty Heavenly Father, because that is so needed in the earth for the kingdom today. The saints of God ignite that holy power, Holy Spirit within them, oh Heavenly Father, so that they can know what those around them are saying in the mighty name of Christ Jesus when they begin to speak in another language. Father, we need to know what is being said in Jesus Christ, mighty, powerful name. Hallelujah. Jesus, help us. Verse 17. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Thine heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counts the towers? For thou shalt not see a fierce people, a people of a deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of a stumbling, a stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. Look upon Zion. The city of our Salam, Salami, Salamites. <laughs> and thine eyes shall see Jerusalem a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed, neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. Did you hear that? Look upon Zion, the city of our Salamites. Salamites. Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. That is who the house of God, that is who the nation of uh, heaven is about. The one nation under God, the heavenly father's nation that he has created within the power and the presence and the covering of the Holy Spirit. What does it say right here? They shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed, neither shall any of the cords be broken. But there the glorious Lord will be unto, unto us a place of broad rivers and streams, wherein shall go no valley, I mean, so, I'm sorry, not, not no valley, no galley with oars, neither shall gallant ship pass thereby. For the Lord is our refuge, the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. Let me repeat that again, verse 22, because I did add some of my own words, but that is what he said also. He is who he is to us. The Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king, and he will save us. Hallelujah, and thank you for salvation, Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Christ Jesus, hallelujah. Thy tacklings are loose. They could not well strengthen their mass. They could not spread their sail. Then is the prey of a great spoil divided. The lame take the prey, and the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. For the people that dwell therein shall be forgiven for their iniquity. Okay? Now, again, this chapter just basically speaks on how the Heavenly Father goes in with his amazing saving grace for his people to defend them and to be a refuge unto them. And Psalm 15 is also attached to this uh, Bible study in Isaiah chapter 33. So we can go over to that also. Psalm 15. And it gives revelation to what we read in reference to who is among us that shall dwell with the devouring fowler. Fire, 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 which is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Psalm 15, and this is a song by David. He says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He that backbites not with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor in whose eyes a vile person is contemned. But he honors them that fear the Lord. He that swears to his own hurt and changes not, he honors them that fears the Lord. He that puts not out his money to usury, nor takes reward against the innocent. He that does these things shall never be moved. Hallelujah. God bless you. God be with you. God truly does love you, and may you be one that is close to the Lord, that shall not be moved, hallelujah. And if you're not, hallelujah, may heaven pull you in to be one, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus.
All right. God bless you. And I'll see you on our next Bible study as we continue to go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel.